And so we come to the work of Ace himself. As I mentioned, he began photographing in the late 1890s until his death in 1927. Um, he led a re relatively obscure um, career, um, although he was known within Paris um, for his views of the city. Um, the outside world was not particularly aware of him until after his death. This happens to be a picture of um, a group of people watching a total eclipse of the sun. Well, they may not a total eclipse, but it's certainly an eclipse of the sun. And they're all looking through smoke glass or something else. And um, Ace, in his first few years of, of photographing, um, included a lot of people. Um, as time wore on, he spent less and less time photographing people and, and really concentrated on the architecture and the environs of, of Paris. Some of what he photographed was decidedly bizarre, but only because it happened to be there. And with his mission of documenting everything, um, then certainly the bizarre fit. Um, work like this um, and this image um, were um, instrumental in putting him in front of the Surrealists in the 1920s. Um, he was befriended by Bernice Abbott, who uh, was a fine photographer in her own right, um, and had been working as Man Ray's assistant in the 20s. Um, and she is instrumental in saving, having saved um, the majority of uh, Ace's work, um, which she ended up rescuing and taking back to the States and donating to the Museum of Modern Art, which now has um, a huge collection of his images and shows them um, quite regularly. But um, this image, because of it's the strange um, tallest man, shortest man, um, subject matter, um, and the way that it's dealt with, um, as I say, made him popular with the Surrealists. But um, at the same time, it's not what I would consider typical of his work. Mostly he was interested in what Paris looked like and preserving it um, on glass plates. Uh, he was working with um, equipment that was very outdated even for his day. He was still shooting on glass plates after film had been invented. Um, film on celluloid, which is what we all came to know. Um, he also couldn't afford lenses that gave better coverage than the ones that he had. So uh, very often you'll see the corners of his images, especially the upper corners, uh, vignetting the way they are here, where we're actually seeing the shadow of the edge of the image. Um, and all, all um, all lenses project round images, and uh, generally the frame is set up um, so that it, uh, so that th that uh, circle of um, the image will um, not become apparent. Um, the reason that this is showing is because uh, Ace was using a view camera, which allowed him to raise the lens. Um, without uh, tilting the camera. What this allowed him to do, what, what um, lots of photographers have done since, is to uh, keep the parallels, I mean the, the verticals, um, which is particularly important in architecture, keep the parallel, the, the verticals parallel so that they're vertical and, um, and remain parallel to each other. So because his um, equipment was um, limited, uh, this vignetting would occur. And uh, with just about any other photographer, this might just be seen as a mistake, but with Ace, very often it becomes an enhancement. He also worked in the uh, parks, and um, this is a particularly nice image of um, very carefully uh, controlled um, topiary. 
Um, I like it in particular for it, again, for the, um, the very dark elements in the foreground uh, in nice contrast to the very uh, pale um, background of the trees. And yet we get to see everything very clearly. Here's a picture of a gazebo. And um, again, in Aceh's world, um, there are lots of layers of information, but no hierarchy. The tree and the gazebo are essentially the same as far as he's concerned. It's all just subject matter. You'll also notice, um, as well as the vignetting, there is a um, kind of odd, dark um, object in the upper left-hand corner, not quite all the way up to the corner. That is actually a clip that held the glass plate in place during the exposure. It's a shadow from it. Ache photographed lots of storefronts, in this case with um, patrons or the owner and, and a friend um, staring out of the front door. And we also see Ache's shadow, um, I, I'm sorry, his reflection, along with the reflection of the camera, which has a, um, a large uh, black cloth um, draped over it. In order to see the ground glass on the back of the camera, um, it, it, it requires that you have a cloth to cover your, your head and the gr ground glass. Otherwise, you won't be able to see a thing. Ache also photographed very kind of common alleyways and um, time after time was drawn to um, very delicate um, shadows from trees and, and other objects as we see here. Again, we have this receding into the background, um, into lightness as we get further away from the camera. This is the Pantheon in, in Paris. And we see the buildings in the foreground with relative clarity, and it gets more and more atmospheric as uh, as the uh, as we move into sunlight, actually. Now here's a uh, location that Ache went back to uh, a number of times, and um, I have a couple of examples of of pictures taken at this particular um, place with different intents. And in this case, the, uh, the hotel in the, fo in the foreground is, is um, essentially the, the focal point of the picture with this bend in the, the road. But um, going back and, and photographing it again, um, the focus of attention is now at uh, on another um, building. Actually, I think these are in the other order. Um, yeah, this is actually the later picture. Um, and you can tell because this has a smoothly paved road, whereas this has cobblestones. So I apologize for that. Um, but again, this curve in the road, um, obviously very attractive and, and part of what had drawn Ache to this point. Now. Um, there are many photographers who have gone to Paris looking for the locations that um, Aceh photographed. Um, and one of them, um, Christopher Rauschenberg, Robert Rauschenberg's son, um, actually made a series of images of um, a, a number of the better known Aceh's. And in this, he, you can see the uh, two side by side, the one that I just showed you and um, Rauschenberg's um, shot from about 10 years ago on the right. So you can see that the scene hasn't changed in, in some ways and then changed in many others in other ways. The more, much more modern windows, um, the window on, I mean the building on the left, um, and actually most of the rest of it is pretty much the same. They've been added um, like the stanchions along the road. But some things in Paris just don't change, or much. 
this is Trianon. As I mentioned, uh, Ace was interested in the parks in, in Paris, and um, this folly um, was a great subject matter. And uh, Ace also took a lot of um, just simple street scenes, but again, not necessarily scenes simply. Um, usually he would wake up uh, before the sun came up and um, load himself down with uh, his camera and his glass plates, which must have weighed many pounds. I'm going to guess at least 65 or 70 pounds of gear. Um, and in his near the end of his career, he was in his 70s, but he would still get up every day and go out and take pictures, usually just as the sun was coming up or before it came up. Um, and before a lot of people had flooded into the streets. So um, again, he could take uh, pictures without the um, distraction of people, really about the environment. And you see the vignetting at the top. I also photographed quite a few interiors. And um, this one, obviously, uh, the home of some very wealthy people. Again, we see his reflection and the reflection of his camera with the uh, dark cloth over the camera. It's reflected in the uh, mirror that has been put into the uh, fireplace. And this is a bar. And uh, Ace, to my knowledge, never used artificial light. And um, so whatever he was presented with was what he um, ended up putting to his, using to his advantage. So in this case, the windows totally blow out, but the focus of attention is really on the bar in the foreground. And um, actually the railing of the stairs and, and the stairs themselves make for um, a nice uh, background. Again, layers of information. As I mentioned, Bernice Abbott um, had worked for Man Ray, and uh, Man Ray uh, found out about Ace through um, Bernice Abbott. And um, although I don't know that he would be considered to have had a uh, direct influence, um, Man Ray was certainly very impressed with his work. This is much more typical of um, Man Ray's work, which um, generally defies categorization. Even so, if even without knowing, uh, even without being told what this is, it's very obvious that it's the base of the Eiffel Tower. This is by Andre Kertes, who was a Hungarian photographer who uh, moved to Paris in the twenties and um, lived there through the thirties um, until he moved to the United States um, as war um, broke out. But um, Kertesz was the, um, a very early um, user of the 35 millimeter camera. And um, although he had worked with other cameras before, he really came into his own while using the 35 millimeter and went looking for unusual perspectives such as this. And this view is unusual in that it doesn't have a horizon. Um, but Kertesz was interested in other things. In fact, I've seen another image that was apparently taken the day before this one, which um, actually did show the horizon in the background. And apparently he wasn't satisfied with that. He wanted the, uh, the shadows of the railings and the railings um, to dominate the frame and went back and re-photographed it this way. And this is the much more successful view. This is the studio of Piet Mondrian. And um, the story is that this ceramic vase with um, the lone tulip in it 
was given to him as a gift, but it was um, painted in supposedly realistic colors. Um, Mondrian couldn't stand the idea of having something so colorful in his studio, so he painted it entirely white. And um, as a result, I think, made this image um, much more compelling. The, the white really pops against the background. This is a, a, a great picture and a great opportunity to talk about um, getting a great deal of depth out of um, a fairly shallow um, uh, space. Um, but we, we get to see the table with um, the flower on it, with, uh, I don't know whether it's sunlight or light from the hallway coming in and hitting it rather um, strongly. Behind that is the coat and the straw boater on the uh, on the hook, and then outside the door we see that it's a it opens into a stairway. Again, Kurtesh was always looking for uh, the unusual angle, and like Ache, layers of information um, would definitely serve him. This is by Brassai, uh, another Hungarian photographer who moved to Paris in the 20s and uh, photographed primarily at night. Um, it's not clear to me whether this is a, one of his night photographs or not. Um, it has a very kind of still, quiet um, feel to it and um, could have been taken at night. However, the street lights would be on, so that's unlikely. This is uh, Brassai's uh, take on the gargoyle that we saw earlier um, in Gustave Le Gray's, I'm sorry, in, um, uh, now I've forgotten which photographer it is now, but um, that we've seen in a photograph before. Um, but taken at night, very kind of brooding and um, at the same time with a, with a sense of humor and with uh, the lights from the streets in the background glowing as if um, the streets were on fire. <laughs> 